How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be explaining the best stub tip in MLB The Show 22 so let's go ahead and get right into it. In order for me to explain this stub trick, stub loophole, uh, stub method, I have to kind of go back in time and this is a form of stub multiplication. I'll go ahead and link two different stub tip videos in the comment section down below. I have talked about this trick once or twice before and I've made a lot of stubs this year using this method. So as you know, the roster updates happen every two weeks. Every Friday, people get upgraded, people get downgraded, and a lot of people invest in players that they believe are going to get upgraded, right? And there's a good chance that you're doing this all wrong. And maybe, maybe wrong is not the right word because you can make stubs investing in players that you believe are going to get upgraded. Uh, but there is a certain way, a special way, that you want to go about it in order to multiply your stubs every single time without having any risk involved. And I'm going to explain it right here in this video. So I just wanted to kind of set this up, right, go through the last roster update, the significant roster update where certain players were upgraded to gold and diamond. Um, but as you can see here, right, going back to Jazz Chisholm, I had buy orders up for 1200 and then I was selling them for 4,381. Now that might not make a whole lot of sense to you, but basically what I did was put up buy orders for Jazz Chisholm when he was a gold card. Some of the buy orders I put up a week before he was upgraded, some of the buy orders I put up the day before he was upgraded, but I put them up at 1,200 because I knew that once he got upgraded to a diamond, uh, people would hit the sell now button and the price would drop significantly all the way down to like 100 or 200 uh, because he was at a silver card earlier on in the year that quick sell value is extremely important and you can see this right here right 344 orders are up for 1200 stubs that those were put there when he was at an 83 overall gold he got a plus three up to an 86 his quick sell value is at 3750 so I was buying those cards for 1200 and then either putting them up on the market or quick selling them for a profit of about 2,500 stubs without even doing anything. All I had to do was just wait for these cards to sell. So I did the same thing with Alec Manoa. I thought Alec Manoa was going to get upgraded. He was at an 84 overall gold. So I put about 200 buy orders up for him between 1,600 and 1,900 stubs. If you don't have a lot of stubs to work with, you can flip in a different way. That video will also be pinned in the comment section down below. This is for when you have a good stub count and you wanna multiply those stubs, right? If you just look at the market, you can tell you know, which people other people think are going to get upgraded, right? People think Kenley Jansen might get upgraded again to a diamond. People think Nestor Cortez might get upgraded to a diamond. You should never buy these cards for 3,200, for 3,600. There is nothing but risk involved there. You should always put up buy orders for under the current price, right? If you want Nestor Cortez, put up a buy order for 1,800 stubs, put up a buy order for 1,900 stubs. If he gets upgraded to a diamond, you will eventually get that card sold to you and then you can quick sell him for the profit. Don't buy him for 3,000 when right now his quick sell value is 1,500. Don't buy him for 3,000. He needs a significant upgrade in order for you to make a profit. That person that had a buy order up for Nestor Cortez for 3,200 something, there's a good chance they're about to lose out on 200 stubs, even if he gets upgraded to a diamond, because his quick sell value is 3K. He's not going to go for more than 4,000 stubs on the community marketplace. What you should be doing is exactly what I'm doing right here. If you notice, I have buy orders up for Rafael Devers for 1,200. I still have buy orders up for Sandy Alcantara at 186 or 150. 250 300 when he was a silver card he got a plus five he got upgraded to a gold and yes if you bought a bunch of those sandy alcantara cards when he was at 200 or 300 stubs then yeah you can make a good amount of profit but there is risk involved right he might not get upgraded you might end up with a bunch of these cards and no opportunity to sell them right if you put these buy orders up 
you can always cancel them. Those stubs are not going anywhere. And as you can see from these screenshots, I still have four buy orders up. You can see that these cards are being sold to me, right? Some people are still putting up buy orders for the quick sell. They need these cards for collections. They need them for whatever the case is. But some people are also pressing the wrong buttons when they're opening packs and hitting the sell now button and basically giving me their stubs, right? They have an opportunity to quick sell these diamond cards for 3,000 a piece. They are choosing to hit the sell now button to sell them for under the quick sell value and then take a 10% tax on top of that. I, I'm a man of the people, right? I'm trying to help you guys out. If people wanna give me their stubs willingly, I'll gladly take them off their hands. I'll use them, I will create content with those stubs and you can't really get banned. You cannot get banned for doing this. This is not manipulation. This is not uh, manipulating the market. This is patience, right? This is just putting up buy orders, waiting. The cards get upgraded. The cards get downgraded. There is just less risk involved with this type of stub method. This is the best stub trick anybody will tell you. I put these buy orders up three weeks ago. I've been waiting for three weeks for these cards to get sold. And look at that. They are now going through. I have way more. I have way more buy orders up there. I have probably 155 left that still need to be sold out of my 200 and i invested what what is 16 or 1700 times uh 201 we can do some quick maths real quick right 17 times 20 is 34 we'll add a couple zeros so about 340,000 stubs invested and when i quick sell these cards if all of them go through when i quick sell them i can make about 600,000 stubs back and obviously here, right, with the cards I've bought, I can quick sell them and get 141K, right? So what, what's, uh, what's 47 times 1,700? That's what, about 80K? 80K stubs I put in, and I can quick sell for 141,000. So this is something that you need to be doing. If you're not doing this, there's a good chance that you are investing your stubs into the roster updates in an incorrect way and that's okay right i used to invest my stubs in the roster update in that way i got sick of losing out on opportunities i got sick of losing my stubs and then i realized right i'm looking at the marketplace how in the world are these diamond cards selling for 150 stubs how in the world are these diamond cards selling for under the quick sell value and then i thought about it i thought to myself this is exactly what people are doing. This is how people are doing this, right? You put the buy orders in June 7th for 1561. Hopefully before the next roster update two weeks from now, which would be tomorrow, we get these orders sold. This Alec Manoa card could get upgraded even more, right? His quick sell value could go up even more, right? We don't know. But I will say this. I will say this, that I'm going to probably quick sell these cards no matter what. I'll take the profits and then reinvest those profits into other cards I think are going to get upgraded tomorrow. And that's the thing, right? I don't know who that's going to be. I think Rafael Devers could get upgraded tomorrow. I think Sandy Alcantara could get upgraded tomorrow. Those two players are probably the two guys that I would invest in, that I would do this type of method with. And those are two players that I've kind of already done this method. If Raphael Devers went diamond during the last roster update, I had about 500 buy orders up for Raphael Devers at different prices. And I probably would have been able to make about a million stubs or about, I would have ended up with about 1.5 to 2 million stubs, somewhere in that range, depending on how many of them went through. So the reason why I'm showing you this is so that way I can help you out and I know that some people might, you know, put their buy orders up for prices a little bit higher than mine. That's okay. That happened with Jazz Chisholm. This still worked out, but that is really going to do it for this video. I'm College Lefty, and hopefully I can help you make your stubs and get those diamonds in Diamond Dynasty. Peace out.